You can swear your allegiance to me now, or you can die. I got less work to do. If a man knows what he is, he must fulfill his destiny. They're waiting for you. Hey everybody, it's What the Flick, Season 5, Episode 9, The Dance of the Dragons. The Dance of the Dragons? Dance of Dragons. Dance of Dragons. The Game of Thrones, as significant an episode as they've had. I don't know whether it was as good an episode as they've had, but certainly uh, significant. Uh, finally, if anything good can come out of this episode, it's that this guy to my left, Cenk Uger, can shut up about Stannis. Uh, well, let, I me, don't just, lie. let yeah. me just jump in and say, uh, I have shaved my Stannis stubble. Right, okay. I used to do every Game of Thrones oh, review right, with, right, a, right, with right, a stubble, so. my Stannis stubble. And I've shaved it because I can't bear it anymore. Yeah, of course. It's uh, uh, never has a, you know, I've spoken often on this show about the rehabilitation of characters. Never has a character been dehabilitated <laughs> as, as, as well, rapidly as Stannis. And there are many things to say about this. But uh, first of all, they lost some people. I mean, my wife, who was sleeping through the episode, she's behind, so she has to catch up. Mm. But she woke up for the screams, and she knew what it was because she uh. knew, she, she and she was like, She's oh. heard people burned alive before. Right, sure, sure, sure. And, uh, well, she's from Jersey. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, she, uh, and she says, oh, uh, I'm done. Like, that's it. I'm done. Yeah. I'm done. And there's no way she's, no way she's alone. Father, why are you don't let her do this? Is it I'm done because that's too horrible to do for the show? Or I'm done because I can't take another character... No, not I think taking away my hope. I think a combination no, of the first hard. one and the second one, and the se and, and a second part, which is, I'm simply not going to watch a show that burns a 13 year old girl who you had spent three years mm -hmm. building sympathy for. I mean, any parent who kills their child, let alone the murder of a child, and you hear it scream and it's made to suffer, after uh, and and life had already been so horrific for this kid and was yeah. such a trooper and a and a likable character. So. Yeah, but 90% of it, it is was that it was just too horrible. Too much. Mm. It's too yeah, much. It's I, a... I, I, I'm with Ben. I mean, look, this is why we like Game of Thrones, because it can be horrible. It can be, I mean, gut-wrenching. And this is, of all the deaths, they have, uh, you know, the, the wedding night mm. of Ramsay and Sansa, of all the horrible sex scenes, was the most gut-wrenching, uh, and that's this season. And of all the deaths, I mean, look, Ned Stark was more surprising. Uh, mm. Oberyn was more shocking, right, in, in its finality. But this was the most horrific by a country mile. Yeah. And and I think that I, I like Ben. I kept thinking of in my mind a, as a person involved in media, how many viewers they're losing yeah, by the totally. second. That's Every right. scream mm. led them Every to losing more Every moment that he viewers. doesn't step forward and do something there. They're losing people, and it's not like yeah. it's not on a. It's not the same as a, as a, a stand of okay, I'm done with this show. Where some people like Claire McCaskill, the senator from Missouri, where she, after the wedding night, after the sexual assault scene of, of, of Sansa, uh, this is visceral. This was a betrayal. Some will say, and I think legitimately, of the contract that the showrunners make with the audience. Like, oh, you think so? I'm not sure I go that far. I, no, I'm saying I think some will think that. I mean, I think it's not. And again, uh -huh. it's, that, they're not reacting. They're not saying, well, they've violated the contract. I'm saying that there is a known contract among people who run shows that there's sometimes you can just go too far and you can alienate your audience to such. You have a deal with them. You ask them to invest their time and care about this show and you cannot kick them when they're down. You cannot mm -hmm. step on them. And I think that that will. I think it just be, I mean, Jack and I are essentially saying the same thing, that in the end, it will be too much for people. Like yeah, that maybe. Is... I, I wonder, I know that no one would ever run this poll, but it would be interesting to see if you could, if you could access people's, I don't know, DVR or something. When people swear off a show, like, like Game of Thrones, and there have been a couple instances where they say they're going to do that, is it like the person who's like, oh, I'm never going to drink again? Like, maybe they don't ever watch again, but they've been watching this show for four or five years, one character. I, I, that, I mean, eventually that is going to wear off. Of course. Some, just, you don't of care what happens back. in the rest of the show? You do care. I'm saying that there is not so much a care because it's not, I think the people who make a principled stand to stop watching it are much more likely to come back than the people who were viscerally kicked, mm. who just think, 
I can't do it. that. Was too, it was too painful. It was yeah. too painful. I don't but, I mean, it, it obviously had been foreshadowed. Like, you'd been talking about it the whole season, it feels like. We've been talking about the possibility of him doing that. And this was like uh, the Ramsey's attack was the thing that could have triggered it. And, again, what I love about the show, and you said this when Tyrion was on the beach being held and we weren't sure if his throat was going to be cut, it's, is he actually going to do it? And in another show, no, he's not going to do it. There's no possible chance that he would do it. But I was seriously wondering if he was going to because it's Game of Thrones. But that is only that you can only have that if every once in a while you do an absolutely horrific thing. And I don't think a lot of people. So this is, by the way, that totally different than the books. Almost everything in this episode, nothing happened like. It oh, did that's what I was gonna. Yeah, I, I was gonna. Nothing's ask the same. As she's alive. He he never burned her. She's in the book. She is in the books. No, he did not burn her. Alive. It's there wasn't even that she, wasn't even a storyline that he. Made. I read the showrunners. I'm gonna read some of it. The showrunners did an excellent interview with Entertainment Weekly with EW.com and. And she's alive in the books, but they refer to the conversations they had with George Martin um, uh, about what would happen. And so it appears, based on those two guys talking to Martin, that it he, will he was involved in, the, in her death, indicating oh. that that was part of his plot point. And it had been also kind of foreshadowed in the book, because in the book... What's her name, Melisandre? Mm -hmm. She's always, again, talking about the sacrifice of the king's blood and yeah. sacrifice and sacrifice. And at some point, you know, like, there, like last week with paying off the, the White Walkers and the paying off Tyrion and Daenerys, which also hasn't happened in the book yet, that we, uh, that we, that we pay off sacrifice, 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 sacrifice. And then they did that wonderful scene where they bond together. And you think, okay, well, this is not yeah. going to be the sacrifice. And then... Yeah. Well, look, I don't want people to get me wrong. Uh, I'm telling you what I think people's reaction is going to be. Uh, my reaction is that's Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. And it, so I agree with John that the great thing about Game of Thrones is that as they set her up you know, on the uh, central pyre, it was a 50-50 proposition. Yeah. Right? And the mother runs out. Yes. And, and, and in no other show would that be a 50-50 proposition. Mm -hmm. That's right. Right. And so... Look, there are moments that there were the I predicted a couple of things in the middle of the episode in my own mind, right? And and it happened, and I'm like, okay, so that's what would happen in a mm -hmm. normal TV show. This would never, ever, yeah. ever happen in a normal TV show, and that's part of the reason why we all care, why we all watch, etc. So yeah. I, I'm just saying, I get that they're going to lose some viewers. I'm not among them, mm -hmm. uh, and. And, I don't know, man. And, I, I, and, and I, but I, let me add one qu yeah. quick thing, Ben. I was going to ask you if it was in the books for a couple of reasons. One, if you guys were leaving me uh, hanging to dry, hanging out to dry on my, like my neutrality at uh, towards Stannis, <laughs> uh, this you know that some people oh, mistook oh. Uh, for uh, for liking Stannis. Uh, like <laughs> knowing, oh, wait till he burns his daughter alive, you schmuck, right? But which you should. You should never yeah. tell me. You should leave me to so, hang out to dry. But the uh, other thing, but the fact that it's not in the book, like I was going to say, I didn't know that, Ben, and I was going to say, well, what are the showrunners supposed to do? If it's in the book, it's in the book. So get over it, right? Yeah. But if it's not in the book, boy, they made an interesting But apparently decision. it will be in, in yeah, a they, book. They, made, in, it, they I, made it very much, uh, suggesting that all of these things are made very much in discussion mm. with George Martin, that the plot points that yeah. they are going off on, uh, he is involved in. Uh, that, yeah, really and that's, in, that's in the behind the scenes of this week's episode. In fact, yeah. they're mentioning that. Yeah, and they, they had said at the beginning of the season that some of the stuff is going to diverge and some of it just hasn't happened yet. And I've been trying to figure out which is which this whole time. But a couple of things about the death. Uh, so I'm defending it because I love the show. And I, I, I think that people... If you just have a visceral reaction, that's fine. But when people feel like they need to take some kind of political stance against something that happens in a show, I feel like that we, we go too, too far sometimes in our culture. But it was obviously horrific. Like, the screaming, I'm glad, it, once again, they didn't actually show it. But it is, I think, objectively, the worst possible way that you could die. Yeah, I mean, it's And just... her, her parents are watching. But also, two, two quick things. One, yeah. why, if it's just about the sacrifice, why can't you knock her out first? Like, why does she have to be conscious for it? That doesn't make any sense to me. And two, I don't even think it's going to work. Because he's not the king yet. Of he's course just a it's declared not like work. he, as I've pointed out to Jank, and this is one where I get finally to say, I told you so. I mean, he's a deranged uh, uh, he's a deranged biblical lunatic. Rebel he, at best. He is no different than the faith militant. And like the difference is if he'd been in charge instead of Robert, he wouldn't have had to have done this, and he probably is capable, right? Mm. At some point. But he believes 
He wants to believe that her magic matters. We don't even know whether her magic's going to make any. We know that she's okay. capable of some cool magic, but if it's that capable, why couldn't she send and go wipe out all of the, the Boltons at Winterfell? It's not it's not that good a monster, right? <laughs> well, it's so got, it can uh, off one guy at a time, you know, yeah. so making it a nice weapon. Uh, well, yeah, I hear you, but I, I, I disagree in significant parts. Okay, so uh, first of all, it is the only god that we have seen have any effectiveness in the show. It's not a god. Yeah, it's no, her. No, no, no. no She's no, got no, 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 no. It's Lord of the Light. Remember the guy who uh, dies and and has and gets reborn. Mm -hmm. The guy that the hound killed and they came back to life. Mm -hmm. That was also Lord of the Light. Well, but, re okay. but really fast on that. Like, so we know that people who follow that god can birth shadow monsters, like in Lost. And they can bring people back from the dead. But again, we don't know that that has anything to do with a god. They right, say we, it's because of their god. Right, we don't but know. it seems like pretty fucking evil magic that they make a zombie out of a person and they make shadows come out of their vagina. Like they may just be worshipping a demon for all we know. Okay. No, well that's going to get to um, one of my central points here, which is that I think it has an excellent chance of working, whatever working means. I also think it's Game of Thrones and it has an excellent chance of not working, yeah. right? Ultimate working being Stannis becomes king. For half a second before the dragons and the dead uh, and the White Walkers mm. kill him, right? So congratulations. But um, so, but it's the only like Lord, what whatever you want to call it, that has significant power, bringing people back to life, the mm. monster. Uh, but but go down the list. It has the things that it said it was going to do. It has done. The three kings are dead, yeah, that, right? Rob Stark, etc. Now, so there's reason to believe it. And actually, Stannis is worse than the the faith militants because he doesn't quite believe it. And yeah, that's he's true. not a real believer. He's just doing it for power. Cynical. Whereas the faith militants, yes, are actually genuinely believe in their nonsense. Right? I don't know that that's true either. I, I know that maybe Jonathan Price does, but he seems pretty interested in his own brand of power. And the guys who carve themselves, they're just. Yes, but they've at least deluded themselves into believing that they actually yeah. believe. And right? we don't actually yeah. see. And you don't think. Of them. But but to to come to the central point, if if I'm Stannis, I think, okay, wait a minute, I get that this thing has tremendous power. I've seen it with my own eyes in unbelievable ways. But if it is really this powerful, and it asks me to do these horrific things, why am I helping it? Why am I following it? To mm. me, I say, oh, okay, well. If that's God, then I'm against God, right, right, and right. I'm going to die, and that's that. No, right? his weakness is his weakness was is, was laid clear. I mean, there's no question. He's an incredibly, epically weak man. Yeah. Well, that's interesting because I think that uh, that there is truth that the pr people who get power often get power because they do what other people are not willing to do, and that is what Stannis just did. But there's a reason why we're all yeah, not willing yeah. to right, do but it. I mean, but right? you have to see that. No, it's. But he also thinks that, again, something that he doesn't know, doesn't fully believe in, doesn't understand, might just be a magic trick, a great magic trick. But this is a world where magic tricks are very impressive. <laughs> right, right. This is not. Uh, this is not. Oh, let's see, Doug Henning. Like this is magic, right? Mm -hmm. But again, we don't know that it's a god. We have no idea whether it's a god. Whatever you know? it is, it has tremendous power. But we don't. But it also appears to be significantly on the wrong side of matters. It does seem yeah, to be on right? the wrong side of matters. But why would he believe this woman who says all the things? And so, in that sense, he is like the Faith Middleton. He is simply, do, let me get into what these guys said, because it's relevant to that. So, Dan Weiss, one of the showrunners, was asked by EW.com, this is a really great story, that fans have surely thought tonight, how could you do that to Shireen? And Weiss flipped the question into a larger debate about how we're all selective about what characters deserve our sympathy. That is true. Stannis has been burning people alive for seemingly trivial reasons since season two. Again, That's true. I, I, don't get me wrong, I've, I've gotten caught up, caught, got, been caught up in the Stannis mania, Stannis the Manus, as I guess some fans refer to him as. <laughs> oh, uh, I didn't know that. Uh, okay. For some time. Also, but always have said, hey, you know, this guy burns people alive. He is a crazy religious fanatic loon. I got it. He doesn't fully believe it, but he's bought into it. He's like 12 of the people running for the Republican nomination. I don't know whether they really believe it, but they've bought into it. I get it. They're not burning people alive. Um, yet. Stannis has been burning people alive for seemingly trivial reasons since season two, yet we've all tended to regard him as a great leader, at least by Westeros standards. And then Weiss says, it's like a two-tiered system. If a superhero knocks over a building, there are 5,000 people in that building that we can presume are now dead. Does it matter? Because they're not people we know. But if one dog we like gets run over by a car, it's the yeah. worst thing we've ever seen on screen. 
I totally understand where that visceral reaction comes from. I have the same reaction. There's also something shitty about that. So instead of saying, how could you do this to somebody you know and care about? Maybe it's happening to somebody we don't know so well. Maybe then it should hit us a little harder yeah. when it's hitting us somebody so well. Um, okay, I, no, I got to jump in to say, uh, I love, love what Weiss just said. I was going to do, I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to do a segment on the Young Turks about people flipping out in Beverly Hills about a dog that's in a car. We care more about dogs in this country than we do about young black men and uh, and certainly young Pakistani men. Okay, we'll drone them to death, we'll bomb them to death. We don't know them, we don't care. They're the five thousand people in a building uh, that we don't know. Okay, but you show me a dog that I got attached to, yeah. I, they, you should see this crowd in Beverly Hills. They're foaming at the mouth, wanting to murder the person who left the dog in the in the car a little too long. Okay. So he's absolutely right, and that is why Game of Thrones is an epic, epic, epic TV show. Because wait, 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 it brings wait. that stuff to that's life. He's absolutely right it. about that's that. That's an interesting point. But, uh, on the, but we have been sold some. We don't randomly not care about people in Pakistan or young black males. We have been told a story. And the story we've been told by very powerful, very skilled people is that one of those people are out to kill us and yeah. wipe us off the face of the earth, and the other is that those people are all uh, evil and don't care about the law, and they're renegades, yeah. and they're lawless, and they're all doing drugs, and they're all in gangs. Like, part of that story, and that story works. I mean, that's a, this, th that story works incredibly effectively well. We don't rant, if we'd never been told that story, I suspect we'd be outraged yeah. at what's happening in inner cities. But because it's so horrible, we have been, again, we've bought into this. Let me, yeah. let me just... Read this one thing. People who watch Game of Thrones don't see the same world as Stannis and Melisandre, Weiss said. To those characters, magic is real and it works. That's something fun about this genre, because when magic is real, and you can see it with your own eyes in the show, it gives you a window into the heads of people who believe irrational things on faith. I can't really get my head around how those people operate in our world, as they're so completely disconnected from the way I process the world. So in a strange way, fantasy is a cockeyed window into the heads of people who would do something terrible for an irrational reason. Yeah. Yeah, but and again, it has some rationality. The Lord of the Light actually does work a lot of times. Well, yeah. In our world, in our world there's no evidence. None. It never works. It never works and people believe it and burn people alive which they literally have and mm -hmm. kill each other endlessly by the millions based on a, a god that doesn't exist. There's no evidence has ever existed and has never done anything on planet Earth. Other than if you believe the, the fairy tales, uh, utter destruction and the murder and genocide of others. That's I, the only thing this God has ever shown he can do according to our religious text. I once saw a piece of toast with Jesus' face on it, and I think that you're just casting that aside. <laughs> but anyway, the, the point I want to make, so they talked about, you know, Stannis back in season two was burning people, but we've had a more recent ruler burn someone who had not been convicted of any crime to secure her power. Daenerys brought three nobles down, chose one at random, and had her dragon burn him alive in front of the audience. He, we had no knowledge that he had done anything. He might have done something. We don't know it. And that was just at a chance that it might help her power, with no magic behind it. But Daenerys is a woman, and Daenerys is very popular with the audience, and so nobody really batted an eye at that. But she burns someone Look, alive. We care but more when people kill people we know. We know that. Yes, mm -hmm. you got us. Humans are weak and fallible, and I care more if Jen gets killed. Oh, I'm killed not criticizing than you. If... I'm criticizing no, no, I got most it. people who criticize the show. I know, but I mean, yes, of course, when we see random people killed, we have a way of inoculating ourselves from it. We have a way of dealing with it, of processing it, whereas when people we know are killed, it moves us. And when people who are in lives related to ours are dead, it moves us. When tragedy strikes us and things we do, it moves us differently. So, I, I mean, I hear you, yeah, and it's an interesting point, and I couldn't stand that he burned those people alive then. That's why, in the back of my mind, I was always like, Stannis is trusting a religious fanatic. Stannis is not gonna come through in the end. Not gonna do it, I feel, I'm pleased. <laughs> that though I had wavered, I, 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 was, I was never on Stannis' team. Although I thought if he were in charge, Okay, at least, you know, again, they'd get, they'd get food to people, Yeah. you know. Oh, just super quick on your point, John. That guy had slaves. That guy oppressed a lot of people. So we don't know that he was specifically guilty of plotting against her, mm. although there was apparently about a one-third chance that, that was the case, <laughs> right? Uh, but Probably. put that aside, we know that he uh, had been part of this corrupt system. So, and yes, you're right. If they had done a lot of backstory, Ben's right. If they had done a lot of backstory, 
on that guy and how he was wonderful to his kids and his dog, yeah. mm. when he's burned alive, we would have had a more of a visceral reaction. She's young, she's innocent, and we know her. That's why it ripped us mm. to shreds. So let's in, let's transition then to because we were started to talk about uh, Danny, uh, mm -hmm. and that's the other big thing that we got. It turns out that when you go to a stadium and they look through your bag, that's progress because <laughs> <laughs> if they do that, they like. Like, oh, man, we got a lot of people here bringing their sons with the harpy masks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you have a gun, like, you have, oh, they, you got a sons with the harpy mask, you can't come in. How do they afford all those masks? I don't know. How do they like, afford all those masks? I, I kept thinking, what, maybe bronze, maybe gold. How'd they get them oh. in? How'd they get them in? How'd they get them in? How did nobody see them put them on? Keep, um, keep it on the belly, under the roof. That's it, even though I don't think that quite holds up to a backstory. The the moment when uh, Eric Bana, number two, looks up yeah. and sees the masks was quite a... Oh shit! Also, yeah. not in the books. Mm -hmm. Also, yeah, none. Yeah. Th yeah. There was a scene similar to that, but almost right, every element said. of it yeah. was very different. So, I, I'll let me repeat from an earlier episode that I love that this stuff's not in the books because now I get to read the books and have more <gasps> moments yeah. as I read the books because they're what I'm substantially now different at the yes. show. <laughs> Which, after the shows are over, I'm going to go back and read the rest of the books. I only read book one. After the show's so. over, I am not. <laughs> okay, I hear. I hear. You. You'd, you'd like them. So, um, so uh, on this one. You, you might be surprised to say I was a little disappointed in a couple of things. Um, I agree with you when everybody's got the mask in the beginning, that's a great moment. Uh, when um, uh, Jorah uh, spears the Sons of the Harpy guy mm. behind him, that was a great moment. Yes. Uh, and I, uh, at least I'm, I'm one for two. I've always liked Jorah. Mm -hmm. Jorah delivers yeah, there. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the things I was slightly disappointed at one, come on, dude. In a fight for the death, always look behind you, right? So the guy who was going to kill Jorah and had him down, and he's like, he's pulling on Oberyn, like, oh, la, 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 I'm going to take my sweet ass time. There's a massive killer behind you. Oh, come on, come on. And, but more the important. crowd, though. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, what, that's literally why it didn't bother me, because they're in the arena. They want to be stars. You think that guy's in another place. He's, he was fighting his guy. Yeah, you know, it's a mistake I think I would never make. I but. think you wouldn't either, right. <laughs> right. But they, they, got, they got sucked in by the crowd. Yeah. So I hear you on that. But to the point of why I was disappointed is that that became more standard TV. I mm -hmm. knew he wasn't going to die. I, even in Game of Thrones, I knew Jorah wasn't going to. In the beginning, when they first started fighting, I thought he might die. But when the guy started going, do, 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 I'm like, oh, Jorah's not yeah. going to die. I felt the same way. Right. Yeah. So that was you know, a little bit more standard TV. Um, Game of Thrones, why didn't you murder one of my favorite characters? Okay. <laughs> At least burn him alive. Come on. Right, right. And and then they're all surrounded by the harpy and they're in this massive battle where there's a you know bloodletting, etc. None of the main characters died. The the poor king of Marine, who we only realized was the poor king of Marine. At the very moment of his death, right, and not like, oh, the look, bad guy. Right, he wasn't. He <laughs> right. wasn't working with those guys. Yeah, yeah Eric Bana too was. That was his second big surprise. Like, yeah. oh, oh wait, oh he was okay. Oh, huh. oh too bad. Oh, well. Good for you. I mean, or sorry. they turned <laughs> on him. But also, do do we know for sure? Look, right, he, or he, gets him, right. he gets stabbed in the chest. He's probably dead. But I don't know that he he could still be alive. I think. No, you're crazy. He's dead. He I think still, he's okay, dead. but the, what I keep thinking, I don't know why. No, like, I never saw the hound die. Right, mm. we know the mountain's not dead. Mm. I keep thinking about like, if I didn't see a character die in saying. Game of Thrones, he ain't necessarily dead. Right? Um, yeah, that's that's totally true. By oh, the way, oh, by the way, you hope he's dead because if the army of the dead reawaken the Hound, <laughs> oh no! Let alone the mountain if he's dead with his three heads. Okay, anyway, <laughs> you, uh, are you struggling to place the form the the turns out not terrible King of Marine because the New York Times has nailed it. It's a. Uh, oh it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who is it? It's, it's driving me crazy. It's 1980s Lionel Richie. I mean, <laughs> I mean that's so. It's exactly it. That's exactly yeah, that's it. Right. Dancing on the ceiling, Lionel Richie. That's yeah. It. That what's amazing is that King of Marines' uh, white daughter also has a reality show in Marine. <laughs> so, mm. that right. I didn't realize that. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm a li like, hey, you did this ma major scene, and none of the big guys bit it. Well, that was kind of lucky. That's TV lucky that none of the major characters I, died. I will say, there. but I mean, Maybe none of the people, but only one person on that stage died. I mean, they were they had the most protection. They were instantly surrounded. All they did was serve to protect their queen. The one thing we got was the what's the beautiful 
uh, Sully, yeah, Missandei was about to get killed, and, and you know, and Tyrion came through. Right. Yeah. But then they rejoined the, you protection. know, the, the protection right. party. Yeah. So now they're surrounded by the harpy at the very end, and uh, and you think Game of Thrones? There's a 50-50 sure. chance that uh, that yeah, you know that like Daenerys dies, Tyrion dies, half of them die. Some right. That's why Game of Thrones is it could be a wonderful, red wedding, wonderful. But uh, you know, if you guys were there, I would have paused to predict, or if my wife cared, I would have paused to predict. Here comes the dragon. Yeah, yeah, right. sure. We're, of course, I had to. I, it had I, to. Okay. I didn't right. think that was. I don't think that's a prediction. That, I think it was an obvious prediction. Right, and hence the the problem with the scene. Yeah. Right, like it's the dragon riding to the rescue in a way that in a standard TV show would happen. I heard. I read one thing where somebody said that when she closed her eyes and and took. Miss Day's hand that it was like you know, uh, you know. Okay, well you're my friend. I don't really have any friends. We'll die together here. It was uh, a Toy Story three moment. But I thought I thought she was. Uh, I thought also when she closed her eyes though she was saying she was summoning Dragon the Dragon. It did seem like there was something with the way that they shot it. It seemed like she was like, in some yeah, way I, calling I, out. I to think it. that's possible. Whether she, she knew it or not. Whether she knew, I think she was possibly. But I mean, we saw earlier him showing up when. She sort of needed him, right? Didn't no, sort no, of. Yeah, that was more just random on a rooftop, on a Parisian rooftop, you know, moment. She needed the moral but, support. Yeah, uh, um, yeah, but but I think that I mean, look, this is now we're going to get into weird logistics. But I think the dragon had to be coming for quite some time when he originally sensed her in danger. Like it's not like he was hanging around the block. He was in Valeria last time we saw him. Right. right. Yeah, but so was Tyrion. Right. Like there was a lot of time for Tyrion to get there. Yeah, I hear you. Uh, he was in Valyria. No, I thought that was they were in Marine. No. No, no. When no, that was Tyrion when saw the dragon flew over the oh, boat. Oh yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the last time we oh, saw yeah. Dragon the Dragon, mm -hmm. <laughs> or whatever his name is. Anyway, I think when they held hands with Miss Sunday, driving Miss Sunday, um, <laughs> uh, they were just like, I got the sense like, okay. I just increased it to, you know, if I thought it in reality was 25% chance of them dying, the 35% chance mm. of them dying. I read one commenter, so this means nothing, but that did Jorah touch Daenerys? Yeah, she, he, yes. he lifted her hand. And then she touched, like they made a big thing, so. so Definitely with the handshake, but I think that was, they I, either did because of the disease or they made a big thing because she's willing to, like she's accepting him back into the I got it, service. but they did, I mean, the guy does have grayscale and they did show very clearly Two hands touching. Can you believe that two of her biggest uh, supporters are Grey Worm and Grayscale? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, uh, but I mean, what do you no, think? Do you think no? But that's the thing. But John, that's the question I asked you a couple episodes ago, and I don't have the answer for. Does any touching of him lead to it, or does it have to be in the infected spot? I, it, my belief <laughs> is that it probably has to be in the infected spot, but I don't think that they necessarily know. I read the Grayscale wiki page <laughs> last <laughs> night. Um, did you actually? I did, and uh, they That's don't awesome. have a clear, they, they there don't. was not an answer on that. They don't know yeah. the cure, they don't know, they yeah. don't know anything. If I was Jorah, I wouldn't have taken that chance. No, why but would keep you? in mind but that we just, in the same episode, that the one person we know who was cured of it was executed, uh, we also have this development so that it wouldn't necessarily surprise me if there was, you know, there is a cure. Right? Mm -hmm. We don't know what it was, but right. there is a cure. She was cured. And we don't know that they're going to get that knowledge in time. We don't know yeah. they're going to get right. it. We don't, and we don't know that it, you didn't need to actually touch the... There, yeah. there was another criticism of that scene that I think is just... I think that people are, people are going crazy. It was, you know, there's this huge epic scene. Why is it that Daenerys and Missandei are helpless and they're standing just holding hands? Oh, come Dude, on. Dude, they on, don't have on. any combat training whatsoever. What about the, the, the random women and men in the audience who just got stabbed as they were sitting there? What about his dar who's just shrieking as he's stabbed in the chest? Like, yes, some people have the ability to fight. Some people are helpless. What? It's not a sexist thing. It's just a fucking world. Okay, one of the sons of the harpy, uh, his mask was knocked off near the end, and I noticed that it was a woman. So apparently oh, there were some daughters of the harpy as well. And, uh, and probably the greatest fighter in the land is Brienne of Tarth. Who is a woman? So bring it down. Bring it yeah. down. Um, okay. The uh, it, their indication is that Eric Bana and Miss Sunday, and Tyrion and Jorah, are okay. But mm -hmm. the fact is, when the dragon, when Dragon the Dragon came and burned all those people and ate to some of them, which was pretty awesome. It yeah. was a little uh, uh, Jurassic Park, but it was still. <laughs> <laughs> still yeah, was, okay. There should have been a I, pool of a glass of wine. Right, with ripples. Right, right. But I love <laughs> Jurassic Park. One of the the first Jurassic Park, one of the great movie going experiences of my life. But then he flies away 
they were still sons of the harpy there fighting. That's like they true. weren't. No, no, I know. Yeah, like, so like, that, that's, let's get into the second stage. Like, so yeah. now, like, they could kill them now. Like, the <laughs> sons of the harpy true. aren't interested in killing her foremost powerful advisors or her inner circle when. I mean, they no lost dragon. a lot in the dragon attack. They, I did, think. they got, and we're clearly led to believe that somehow that, that, that foiled them. Or but they it, fled. I didn't quite see them all fleeing. And I think that I think that that was a, a short-sighted to not see the arena either with cowering sons of the harpy on the run. Some of them did, st but obviously when we saw them first running, I thought, oh, that's it. But no, many of them stayed because because dragon the dragon got to eat some. So minor to major points uh, as she's minor point as she's getting on the dragon and he's got all those like horns. I'm like, that's gonna be uncomfortable. Right. Sure. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Um, now I, look, this is me. I don't know if I'm being a dick, but. As she flew away, I got a little How to Train Your Dragon vibe on, on, yeah. out of it, and I, I didn't like that. I know she's got to mount the dragon at some point. I know that. So that's okay. I got it. I'll, I'll fine. So this is the harpy. Dragon shows up. Get the fuck out of there. Right. I mean, what are you? You're going to fight a dragon? Pretty brave. Dude. Right. <laughs> but on the other hand, and this is a very important point, the dragon is beatable. <laughs> right? I mean, they speared him two, three times, mm. and you got the sense. He was hurt. Yeah, he was hurt, he was and hurt if dog. you throw 10 spears, 15 spears, you're going to get him at also, some point. Also, maybe keep throwing the spears when the person you want to kill gets on the dragon. Yeah, maybe. yeah. Or I throw know. the spears at hear. the people in the group in the middle right. in the first place. It just, it seemed, it was constructed goofily. Like, we weren't, I had not yet in any way established that there were no more spears being thrown when she got on the dragon. And, and that they were no longer in danger. Yeah, there could have been a shot, like, panning around that they were And if they're no longer running. in danger... You don't need to get on the dragon right now. No, I think it was you like know? an. I mean, see, he, she had she, an intuition. Like she looked yeah. in the dragon's eyes. They reconnected. Like that's why. Again, it's like why is she so helpless? No, like she walks up to a dragon that at this point, in her mind, could still kill her. Sure. It looks like it wants to kill her very yeah. briefly. She connects with it, takes control of it, and then even though she has no training, she's surrounded by enemies. She just decides to go flying. Like that is right. That's badass. It is. At the same time, I, I get. I got stuck on with the same thing Ben uh, was thinking, which is. What do you, wh wait, why are you flying off? Your main advisors are there, still there, surrounded still, by the... Still it's in not terrible, ter terrible it danger. Almost, it almost feels like, like, I get it, you're exhilarated. Hey, I'm going to fly on a dragon, right? <laughs> but at the same time, don't fly off. Don't fly off. These people just protected yeah. you. Fly around, circle, kill yeah, some yeah, more. Yeah, maybe come back. Some more yeah, let's do some more. Yeah, it's like if you're in a gunfight with your friends and like, ooh, Harley. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. right. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. So I know why the... the you know, the showrunners had to do the, what they did. They needed enough harpy around for, uh, once the dragon attacked for the dragon to kill them yeah. and for the dragon to be in actual danger, but oh. they needed enough of them dead so that you don't think the Tyrion and all those guys are gonna die the minute she flies away, but they still has to be enough danger that she, so yeah. that she needs to fly away. So that's a tough balancing act, and I get it. The, the, the way that it does, I guess it doesn't really matter because they have to stand on their own, but the way that that, the one thing that is the same is that in the book version, she ends up in the middle of the arena being protected by the dragon. And so in the book, it makes sense that she flies away. She's not surrounded by a circle of friends that she should be there to protect, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it just, uh, uh, I mean, it was, a, it was a very good scene with some weird TV moments, regular TV moments in it. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, or weird, you know, weird, fairly unsuccessful 3D added at the end movie. Like you yeah, know, yeah, the three D was yeah, also the, the, kind of cheesy. Yeah. And, yeah, they did what they could. And and hey, Game of Thrones uh, universe, I have one uh, request of you: don't put Tyrion and and uh, Daenerys in the same place at the same time. We can't have both of them dying at the right, same time. Right, right, right. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's right. Like I can I can live with one at a time. You know, their deaths dragged over seven seasons. <laughs> right. Both of them dead at the same time. That would have been tough to deal with. Yeah, I and, and I was hey, to get to your point, and we got to talk real quick before we wrap up about Arya. But but that scene bothered me also because I was literally, I, I was sh shaken by what had happened earlier. So like it is such mm. an a, a, it affects everything, and so I wasn't that into that scene because look, I I'm not quitting the show, right? <laughs> but I I get it, and I was like. I, come on, man! Don't I don't want to hear a thirteen-year-old girl screaming while her father doesn't help her. I, I'm not interested in that. I get it; it might happen in this world. It can happen in this world without me. It was mm -hmm. partly what I was thinking. Like, wow. and I was thinking, what if I just stopped? I could stop. I'll be okay. I'll wrap yeah. up this season, and right. then I'll, you know, and I'll be like, I'm not interested. Inconceivable. Wow. So, um, so, but it did affect the, how I viewed the rest of the episode. Unquestionably, how I viewed the rest. of the I was super bummed out 
a little angry and just I'm sad. I like that stays with me. I, I'm hearing her shrieking now. So anyway, let's get to Aria and Marin. Sorry, so, I, actually, yeah. now that you brought that up, just a couple of quick uh, notes on on last notes on the burning. One, uh, uh, Stannis must now be referred to as Kaiser Soze. On steroids. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was a Kaiser Soza plus moment, yes. right? Mm -hmm. uh, two, when he decides that he's going to kill the, uh, his daughter, he's also made the decision that the Onion Knight's a, a goner. I mean, he sends him away. Well, the Onion Knight's not going to stay with him now. Right. That's Onion Knight, at a, at a best case scenario, leaves him. Right. We, can't can't I, bear it. I right? was thinking, here's gets the news, went at Castle Black, and it's like, I'm going to, I'll sign up. I'm with yeah. you. I'll stay with Jon Snow. Like I'm not going back to that. Yeah, guy. that's I mean, possible. Yeah. Worst case scenario is he comes back. He doesn't know. He comes back. He flips out, and they kill him. They right. have to. Right. They, they have, have to. to. Right. You right. know, though, I I don't know why I wasn't thinking about this either before, right now, or while watching the show. But we were talking, I think, last week or the week before about how, um, uh, in case you've forgotten, Brienne of Tarth for ten weeks has been standing outside of Winterfell, and we were like, oh God, she's she wants to kill Stannis. She doesn't know he's there, but she wants to kill Stan Stannis. And we were like, well, that'd be terrible now. No, maybe not right, now. now. Maybe now, it wouldn't be so now, terrible right, if Bran were to I kill know, Stannis. but okay, so that's partly why I brought up the Kaiser Sousa thing. I respect Kaiser Sousa. This was so horrible, I don't respect this, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I know they're both fictional, okay? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, I still want Stannis to beat the Boltons. I, 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 that's, and that's a question I have for you guys here. We'll put it up on our app, too. Who would you, who would you rather have in charge of Winterfell at the end of the season? The Boltons or Stannis? It has yeah, to be Stannis. It has to be Stannis, but it's a uh, but it doesn't make doesn't mean you like Stannis. No, the ideal scenario is he kills all the Boltons a little and Brienne of Tarth goes, "Oh, Stannis, what sick the and cuts his head off." Mm -hmm. right? Right. 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 That'd be fine. Yeah. And so I'm curious what uh, what's his name? The the onion the onion? onion Davos. Davos, right. I'm curious how Davos other than obviously seeing in the ruins the Little horse that he carved carved for. Her, oh yeah, that deer. The deer, she's whatever. A you know. Um, oh right, right, right. I missed that. Um, so uh, and but also you saw there was a very clear shot of Stannis's most loyal guys mm. there where they were like, Ugh. like <laughs> yeah, too much. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. then again, I am very hungry. Uh, yeah, but, or, yeah. Or the flip yeah, side yeah. is, but yeah, no. But I mean, also I am hungry. Like it's not working out anyway. Yeah, and that's this was true. too much, and they might. I mean, could there be a mutiny? Of yeah. course. Yeah. Uh, all right. So oh, and we've can we just really, because I know we're not going to spend time on it, but the Jon Snow? I mean, they, they brought everybody back. They you brought see everybody the giant back, back and you see that he is, that he is uh, and, I, and he hinted at it in an interview. I'm not going to spoil it, but, but I, I, he seems in danger in Castle Black. Yeah, that kid right. did not no, give him a Ollie, good look. Ollie is, uh, Ollie is going to Omar, Ollie could Omar Jon Snow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, of course. That's what we've been yeah, worried so we've about been all season. And, and, and thinking that's what I, I ran into at a TCM event. The writer, Dennis Lehane, wrote Mystic River, uh, uh, Gone Baby Gone. And he, a big Game of Thrones fan, he wrote the scene in The Wire where Omar gets killed. Uh, oh. And he loves the use of the phrase, uh, Omar is a verb, that Ollie could Omar Jon Snow. <laughs> he, was a, he was a big fan of that. Uh, he didn't think it's going to happen, though. Yeah, and huh. so I, at least the, the top ranger guy, whatever his name, the bad guy, let them through the gates. And he had a killer line there that I think is close to, uh, could be you know true. nothing, Jon Snow. Right. He said, Jon Snow, you've got a big heart, but it could get us all killed. It will get us all killed. It will get us all killed. Yeah. I, I don't think that's true, but but watch out. And you see it. There's, and, there could be truth in that. No, and yeah. Jon Snow looks around and he thinks, hmm, maybe I've... Maybe I've just sealed everyone's fate here. Yeah, right. I don't think yeah. anybody But at the same time, the minute they walk through the gate, uh, they have to convene the leadership of the of the uh, the crows and say, "Hey, guys, I saw the dead come." And, right, right. And I, have, I saw I the White Walkers come and kill all the people, and then turn them into the army of the dead. So whoever is here would have been part of the army of the dead. It's not a question. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a question. Yeah. It was just clearly the yeah, right. We should have a meeting. I have some interesting news. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. Right. Exactly. And. <laughs> Jon Snow's beating himself up that he didn't get there earlier. Dude, they probably came because you got there. So, like, you saved some people. It was clearly the yeah. right move. So I'd walk still away, your fault. heads up. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> okay, real quick. Uh, so, uh, just because we got it, Arya and it's Marin is his name? Marin Trant. Yeah, so he killed her teacher, although we didn't see him die either, but there's no real value in, yeah. mm -hmm. in, in no, bringing him back. back. Yeah. Uh, Serial Pharrell, yeah. Um, so, uh, and he's on the list. So we're, this is a, 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 an early test of whether she's committed to be 
the girl of the faceless people. What is it? The girl. Yeah, yeah. She's not. She's, she's, not, she's not committed guy. to that. She's still Arya. She's a Stark, and uh, she saved her sword, and that's who she is. Yeah. No. Yeah, and it's a bad idea. But I got. I'm frustrated with her. Kill the thin man first. Okay. Do what you're supposed to do, and then on your leisure time, go track the other dude. Because you can't get proper revenge if you're outside of protocol, because then they're not going to help you, right? Like, you think that dude's not going to notice the guy who pops up out of every corner? Yeah. Like, oh, I'll sneak it by him? Right. How does, she how, does he know, right? how does he know she wasn't lying this time when she says he wasn't hungry today? Yeah. I think she probably No, knew. of course he knows. <laughs> of course he knows. Yeah. He's right. playing with her. He's testing her. Well, actually, but, I, what, one thing. So we, we said that they, the, they made a mistake sort of in how they constructed the show and edited that they didn't go back and show a scene of the Sons of the Harpy. Like, were they fleeing? Were they burning? They never went back. Did that guy ever get any oysters? Because he's still <laughs> just, girl, girl. Uh, he's so hungry. Yeah. What's, or cock, I think he, maybe he cockles. wants cockles. Cockles. I think he wants cockles. What are cockles? I don't know. I don't know, but Something they don't sound good to me. Yeah. Um, um, and, and so, and then I realized, she's a young girl. I'm like, yeah, I wouldn't make that rookie mistake, but I'm a 45-year-old man who's lived in Westeros a long time. Right, she's, right. A, young girl, she's a young girl who has been essentially without parents for three right. years. Right, and is angry and is misguided and yeah, la, la, la. Like, it's the same thing, I think, when a 23-year-old amazing basketball player makes a mistake. He's 23. Let's not forget that. Yeah, yeah, I'd love. I would like to. I'd like. I'd really like her. I mean, I know she's far away. I would like her to see John. John mm. Like John loved her. She loved John. It would be a. That'd yeah. be an. That'd be a nice thing. Um, all right. I think that's it. Uh, obviously, is you know a a powerful, a unforgettable episode. Uh, we had some problems with it, but again, we have problems with it as as people who love the show. Um, and and they took and they know they they they're not they're not kidding themselves. They know what burning a 13-year-old girl on television does. Yeah, right. Uh, but still, no major character has died. And so I now I, we're going to episode 10, which is supposed to be a wrap-up usually. But I feel like it can't be. We still need a major death here. And I, so old, old, I don't we think might we get one. After getting the White Walkers and, 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 and getting... The uh, dragon, you think they're going to wrap the it up? The dragon and what's her name? Who just, Shireen? Shireen, yeah. I've already, look at that, I've already forgotten her. What a dick. God, heartless. <laughs> This is what media uh, does to people. All right, season finale next week. We'll be here, hopefully, with a big crew to uh, discuss it. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody.